Hey everybody, welcome to Tuesday. People have been asking about Twitch. I am not doing Twitch today, but it's because I am going to be on Review Tech USA's stream with, with Rich Masucci. Yes, it's a Rich and Red reunion. So I'm going to be there at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, I think, tonight. Um, I'll tweet it. Uh, yeah, that should be a lot of fun. So if you're looking for something like live content tonight, it'll be that. Um, I am going to use the Spider-Man trailer leak news to talk about sort of movies in general and why before this whole Spider-Man leak story, I didn't realize how actually stoked I was in advance for Spider-Man No Way Home and my reasons for that. So if you like this sort of very all over the place, very meta, like, film stuff, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K, because, no lie, this is going to be friggin' meta. And I blame Nicolas Cage, okay? Because on Friday, I stumbled upon this movie. My husband and I were looking for something to watch. Uh... It was too late to go to the drive-in to see, like, new release movies. Because we're not going to theaters right now. Um, but we stumbled on this movie called Pig. Starring Nicolas Cage. We watched it because the first thing we saw was cochon. Which is the French word for pig. And I'm like, cochon, what's this? And like, it's a movie called Pig? Starring Nicolas Cage? Oh, that's a guaranteed watch. And it turned out to be, like, two plus hours of like Rain Man meets um, Fight Club meets The Fisher King with Nicolas Cage and a pig. That I'm not going to tell you anymore other than it, it is it is it is very sad, but it is very good. And it is a movie about men and their feels. And I enjoyed that way more than any of the strong female character pablum that I've seen all summer. Like, no joke. Because it was about individual people with individual rules of, like, views on the world. And I understand why I should care in this movie. And this leads me to the Spider-Man leaks and me not understanding why people are freaking out so much about the Spider-Man leaks, to me, I'm not going to say what they are, because spoilers, but to me, the leaks are entirely predictable based on where they've been going with the Disney stuff. Now, okay, this is the problem with Disney's model right now, right? Disney Plus is a subscription service. If you aren't a Disney Plus subscriber, there's going to be a lot of catch up <laughs> in the Marvel movies to come. And I don't think that's necessarily fair. Like, I'm all good with a shared universe, but like, holy shit, the only one that isn't kind of required to know what the fuck's going on in the foreseeable future is Falcon and Winter Soldier because they're they're building to like the Hawkeye's Daughter series. Um, but yeah, like WandaVision and Loki are, are so tied to what's coming down the pipe, which is why I don't know why people are so like freaking out. It's It's almost like Disney, like we own everything. Let's go for it. Um, which, you know, it's making people happy and it's making people excited. But it made me realize that I'm looking forward to Spider-Man No Way Home just because I, I really like Tom Holland as Spider-Man way more than I thought I would. Um, and I really like the supporting cast of the standalone Spider-Man movies. Like, I think, you know, Zendaya is... Um, the, the whole MJ, not Mary Jane thing, I think that's well handled. And the thing about Zendaya's MJ is she is a defined person. You know, she's snarky and world weary and kind of woke, um, but 
you know, at the same time, that means, you know, she finds out he's Spider-Man and he's like, she's like, okay. Because she's so fucking cynical and old soul. It is just like, whatevs. It worked, right? It was it was a different take on it. But that is, like, I'm ready for it again. Because so many of the strong women that are being thrown at us at action cinema lately are just... They're new versions of Bella Swan. They are characters that are complete ciphers and they display no exceptionalism on screen, but the men around them are talking about how exceptional they are. And so we're, we're supposed to believe them. And I'm like, I would like to see a woman depicted as exceptional who actually seems exceptional to me, right? I enjoyed Jungle Cruise because of Emily Blunt. It's not a great movie. It's a kid's movie. It's extremely predictable. Dwayne Johnson is Dwayne Johnson. Um, but Emily Blunt is legitimately alive on that screen. Same for Emma Stone and Cruella. I highly, highly recommend Cruella. These two movies have saved my fucking sanity this summer in a sea of pablum. And, you know, the, the complete opposite to that is um, I saw Fall Guy, uh, Fall Guy, Free Guy over, over the weekend. Overall, I enjoyed the movie. But it was another sort of nothing placeholder girl that is only special because some guy is in love with her for reasons I don't understand. She's got a kind of weird Fortnite style avatar and she plays a lot of online games, but strangely like people just fall in love with her and I hate this shit because that's not life okay it's not life she's supposedly one half of like this game development partnership but I can see no discernible influence she has had on this game it seems like the dude who's in love with her put all these things in the game because he was in love with her so she's more like a muse than a developer and as a female game developer that fucking pissed me off but the rest of the movie was a lot of fun like ryan reynolds is very ryan reynolds and he's just on this side of insufferable and that's what makes a good ryan reynolds performance right it works in this because he's basically a sim that becomes a hero in as i'm calling it grand theft Fortnite. Like it and and Taika Waititi is is excellent as like a surge recently shit can from Ubisoft meets like an evil Richard Garriott emphasis on evil. But he's he's so good. Like he's such a scene stealer. And then there are like some cameos and stuff. And, and that saves, you know, that makes a, an otherwise mediocre movie very watchable. And what's weird is that the actress who performs both the avatar of this nothing placeholder girl character, um, it, she's really good as the, like, she, she literally has, like, this metal boob plate strapped to her in it. She's kind of like a Lara Croft, kind of like a Bayonetta, kind of like neither, because, of course, you have to be more covered up in movies now. You can't actually do that. But she's really good as like the avatar in game. But as a person, there is fuck all to the character. Like fuck all. It's a bunch of, she likes her coffee this way and she likes this kind of ice cream and she likes this annoying pop song. And that, that makes her one true love. Like I see nothing remotely interesting 
about this person. You're just supposed to buy it because some dude who, of course, is a game dev that she's just goddamn completely oblivious to the way he feels about her. I'm so sick of that fucking trope. Um, Because I always end up feeling for the guy, right? I'm like, dude, why are you chasing this nothing of a girl? You are so much better than this. Go out and meet a second girl. Just any other girl. Go out and meet a second girl in your life. No, really, you'll recognize she ain't that special, right? That's where I end up. I know that's not what you're supposed to think, but that's where I end up with these parts. And that's why, you know, as as mediocre as Jungle, Clu Jungle Cruise was overall as a movie, at least, like, Emily Blood's legit, like... She just has such great presence on screen and um, they do all these cool like old school adventure stunts and, and it it lifts the movie beyond the otherwise bland, predictable narrative. It, it was a good second movie at a double feature drive in. And that's getting me back to Spider-Man is I wasn't big on Zendaya in the first Spider-Man just because Zendaya is in fucking everything. She is Zendaya. I don't get the Zendaya. The first time I saw her was on Dancing with the Stars. And then it was all the Zendayas. She's like the friggin' Kang, the conqueror of female actors. There's just going to be a whole bunch of them, right? Um, but her MJ is a person with a defined character and a defined voice. And defined reactions. And now I'm super stoked for Zendaya, man. I don't know about Dune. I don't know about Dune. But, you know, other people are all OMG, the spoilers thing. Okay, stop watching now if, if you don't. If you don't want to, uh, don't want to find out the spoiler, but it's basically like a Spider-Verse shtick. Um, they're bringing back other actors. Like I said, Disney owns fucking everything now and the things they don't own, they can rent. Um, so it's like all the Spider-Mans because multiverse now. Um, I'm not sure I terribly care about that, even though I will be very happy to see Andrew Garfield back. I'm looking forward to seeing that supporting cast in Spider-Man with Ned and MJ, and I love those characters now. And you guys know I don't tend to like the high school stuff. I'm too old. I hated high school. I never want to go back. Things said in high school give me a rash because it reminds me that, yeah, it was that awful then. It actually seems worse now. High school is a pit in hell. Like, we have to add, like, a tenth ring of the inferno that is high school, okay? High school's a fucking shit pit. I don't want to go back. But these characters are adorable, and they're probably not in high school anymore. I'm still in that, like, ultimate Spider-Man mode. Because I think they graduated. I'm confused now, because the blip, some of them are five years older than... Um, and this is what I don't understand about leaks, getting back to the original thing. I don't see how this hurts the movie. Why the secrecy behind this? This is more legitimately exciting and gives people a reason to check back in than any of the official marketing I have seen for Shang-Chi or the Eternals. And okay, maybe they're worried that the Spider-Man stuff will step on those two movies, but they already stepped on the marketing for Shang-Chi with the Eternals because I think they're really worried that nobody's going to see the Eternals because nobody knows what the fuck it is. They're making it look like a superhero World Vision commercial. Um... That's modern marketing, man. If it's at all a new concept, they don't know how to market it, which is why we get all these retreads and remakes and reimagines. No shit. 
Look at this marketing. Like, it is just, oh, look, a bunch of famous people you've seen in other things. What's the concept about? Right? Um, I don't know how they're going to get away with calling people deviants. That's going to that's gonna be an interesting sell. But, like, it's basically... If people don't know what the Eternals are, it was Jack Kirby doing a do-over on New Gods for Marvel. It's pretty much the exact same thing. And they've just, like, gender and, like racially diversified the cast because nobody knows who the fuck these people are um so it's basically a bunch of very old people with superpowers that sort of wake up after a while because something and i suspect it's something that happened in a disney plus series like th this is becoming like comic books where you have to buy every fucking book just to know what's going on. And that creates fatigue. I wish they'd stop. Like the one thing I'm kind of looking forward to about Shang-Chi is hopefully it'll be a standalone. And they're marketing it based on a Jackie Chan homage. Maybe before he was like a CCP mouthpiece, that would have been awesome. Maybe they're trying to make a bunch of money in Asia. But it's kind of ironic that the great hope for this current phase of Marvel now is a Sony flick because there's legitimate excitement surrounding Spider-Man in a way that people don't know what Shang-Chi is. Like, even if you've read the comics, we don't know what it is because they've stripped out all the Yellow Peril stuff to the point that Okay, the only remaining thing is that he's a guy named Shang-Chi who does martial arts. That's a fine premise. I like martial arts, you know, but it's 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 going to be a totally new thing. I'm not sure how people are going to respond to it. Like, is this a movie that people are going to risk disease to go see in theaters? I think the weather will still be good enough to go to the drive-in in September. That's why I'm seeing all my movies. I'm not going to the theaters. Um, they're doing a... It's weird because they already had the premiere, but it's not out until the third. And then there's like a three-week exclusive. And they have fucked this movie. They have fucked this movie. Like, even if it bombs, it's not the movie's fault. The rollout on this film has been bad by any standard, complete horseshit rubbish by Disney's. And I think it's because they're worried about the Eternals. Shang-Chi probably wasn't as expensive as the Eternals, just because, you know, I love Simu Liu, but he's the dude from Kim's Convenience. He's not going to be as expensive as Angelina Jolie, Salma Hayek, Kit Harington. And, 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 right? That's an expensive fucking movie. And I think they're worried about it. And to me, it's like, let the Eternals be the Eternals. Just sell it. Tell people what it's about. Don't worry that people won't get it. Trust that it has the Marvel stamp. And Angelina Jolie and Salma Hayek, two women who are eternally hot. People will see the movie just based on that. Trust me, Salma Hayek, okay? Um, but it's not going to do gangbusters because of timing. They got to go whole hog on Spider-Man. If this trailer, if this leaked trailer is legit, just release it. Just release it. And like, yes, yeah, Sony's going to get a piece of that, but... Just release the fucking trailer. It's good for everybody. It will make people excited again. It will remind people what they like about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Instead of this like sort of weird stuff that has been happening lately, it will revive enthusiasm for the whole thing again. And possibly make people more interested in Shang-Chi and the Eternals based on reflected glory because 
even among hardcore nerds right now, the general and I use nerd as a you know as a self-identifying term. A lot of us are kind of we'll see it, but we're not stoked. Like I know everybody I've talked to has been in the same boat as I am. If if Marvel can make the Eternals work, okay, you've got me for life again. But that's because there is no confidence that they will make the Eternals work. They seem to not have a lot of the CGI done on the film yet. And the stuff um, that is released so far is a lot of pretty people standing there as the camera swoops around them in slow motion where every single frame of the film has been digitally altered to the point that it looks like animation. Like there is not a single wrinkle on Angelina Jolie's outfit. What is that supposed to be? It's uncanny valley. Like I get you want to make her look like a goddess. But if you have to improve that much on Angelina Jolie. I live action movies are cartoons now. They're so digital. Right. It's just, I want to see a human. I want to see a face. Like, I want something that feels real. And it, it was that Nicolas Cage movie that just brought it all back. Because there's this little movie about Nicolas Cage playing this, like, dirty, bloody, kind of crazy guy who really loves his pig. And it made me feel the feels. And that's all it takes. It wasn't a very expensive movie. It was just, I legit did not know what was going to happen from one moment to the next. And it was just good performances all around. Can we get more of that, please? Like, what's been going on this summer has actually made me long for another, like, original Ant-Man. Like, an Edgar Wright type thing. And I know Ant-Man didn't do crazy great, so I'm probably not going to get that. But I just want another movie where human faces and bodies look like human faces and bodies and not these super CGI, overly smoothed, too much things. Except for, you know, the very cynical, deliberately making Scarlett Johansson look super rough in Black Widow, which, which, was, which was a statement that I think was... You know, that and the ill-fitting costumes were, I think, kind of a mistake in that film. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really think the, the hope is going to be Spider-Man. Because, I mean, it feeds into Doctor Strange, too, right? Like, we already know. Like, we already know. There's a Doctor Strange toy for Spider-Man No Way Home. They're not hiding that. But then they're hiding another, like huge selling point which let's face it is gonna trend on twitter the minute the movie premieres everybody was gonna be spoiled on that anyway before they saw the movie i don't know how the free guy cameos i managed to avoid those those are pretty good um but i was actually unspoiled about that one and that never happens because the minute you're on twitter it's like ah you can't be on Twitter for five seconds without getting spoiled with that, that weekend's movie, right? So just, if the footage is legitimate on the Spider-Man trailer, it's a trailer! It's a trailer! You were gonna release it before the movie was out anyway. Release the trailer. <laughs> release the trailer cut. Oh my God, Sony. Just put it out. What is this nonsense? It's early, but it's free advertising. Stop blocking a trailer. This is stupid. This is actually benefiting you and you're shooting yourself in the foot. All right. Hope you found my very meta ramble inspired by the leak of the Spider-Man trailer and Sony's overreaction because it was going to be out before the movie anyway. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Thanks for watching.